Well, please, please just let me finish this stuff. Oh, you know what? I just realized I won't be able to listen to music because I have to. Oh my goodness. Because I watch um, my professor video, professor's video while I do this assignment. Let's see how many questions I have to do for this assignment. This is overdue. Whoa, wait just a minute here. She changed the due date. I'm certain it was due yesterday. I'm so confused. She must have changed it. What? Wait, and she also changed the due date for this. Oh my goodness. She changed the date for this project, too. This is now due on the 29th of October. When is that? She changed the due date for the project to Saturday. Oh, man. She changed the due date for these problems to Tuesday. Now, what about this assignment, though? She didn't change this. Wonder why she did that. Let's see how many questions there are. Oh yay! There's only four questions. I wish she had made a video about the assignment with a million questions instead of the one that Helly has four questions. Oh man. Okay. So we will now set up stuff. Actually, you know, I don't know if I'll need the textbook because I'll just be watching a video. I'm gonna do it. Oh wait, never mind. I need it for the question numbers. So number seven, nine, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. I love how the page numbers are always wrong. Crap. Well, let's just see what problems are going to be here. Oh, it looks like the, this is where the problem is. It's just that I don't know why she has the wrong page number. But anyways, so problem seven. Oh man. Is it just on this page? Yes, good. This is all of problem seven. Here's the download for this. This won't be so bad considering there's only four questions for this assignment and then it's gonna be really hard to do that other assignment without the help because there's a lot of questions. But I can't just keep waiting for her to post the video, so.
I wonder if I can do it by myself. Probably not. <laughs> okay. Generate a simple random sample of size 25 from the data. Okay, hopefully it's just much easier to watch if you uh, get how to do it instead of reading through the textbook. I'd say good morning, but many of you will be watching this when it's not morning anymore. So, happy dreary Saturday. How's that? <laughs> okay. Um, chapter seven um, focuses on sampling and sampling techniques. So, the problems we're going to work uh, focus on generating random samples in order to um, sort of create fake samples. Okay, so mock samples. And so for problem seven, a manufacturing company's quality control personnel have recorded the proportion of defective items for each of 500 monthly shipments of one of the computer components that they their company produces. Uh, the data are in this file, T0707. The quality control department manager does not have sufficient time to review all of these data. Rather, she would like to examine the proportion of defective items for a sample of these shipments. Uh, for this problem, you can assume that the oh, where did I go? population is the data from the 500 shipments. So use Excel to generate a simple random sample of size 25 from the data. And then part B, calculate a point estimate of the population mean from the sample selected in part A. What's the sampling error? Uh, the sampling error is the difference between the sample mean and the population mean. So it's simple subtraction there. And then uh, part C, calculate a good approximation for the standard error of the mean. And part D, repeat parts B through C after generating a simple random sample of size 50 from the population and uh, compare the values that you get to the one that you did with 25. All right. So um, as you see here, we've got our shipment number, our proportion size in column D. This is the uh, number of defective items in the shipment divided by the total number of items in the shipment, which happens to be 100, okay? So um, the first thing that we need to do is to generate a simple random sample of size 25 from the data. So let me move this thing out of the way. And um, it's going to be my first one. Oh, 25. Random sample of 25. I am a stupid dum dum, so I'm just going to copy everything exactly how she's doing it. Random underscore 25. There. And to get a random value between zero and one, I use the formula R A N D, so equal R A N D. Random number between zero and what? Wait. Zero and one. Right, zero and one. Why is it zero and one? Okay. I use the formula R A N D, so equal R A N D, and then open parenthesis, uh, close parenthesis. If you wanted it to range between some other numbers, like let's say zero and ten or one and ten, 
you would put those inside the parentheses. But since we just want it to be some random decimal between zero and one. I guess the reason is because, huh. um, because the results here are between zero and one. Of course she got that result. What are the odds? <laughs> Wait. So equals rand parentheses. Okay. Um, equals rand. There we go. Uh, she got 0.99. What the heck? <laughs> Some random decimal between zero and one, R, A, N, D, open, close. Uh, I go back up onto that cell, hover over the lower right-hand corner, and double-click. It copies those values. And double-click. What? Why did it change? It must have generated it again. <laughs> what the heck? Wait, I'm so confused. Why are we doing that? I don't get why we're doing it like that. Okay, I'm just gonna follow along, but this doesn't make sense to me right now. Like what the purpose of this is. Okay. Uh, copies that formula down for every cell um, that has a value next to it. So we'll have the same number of random samples as we had uh, original uh, data points, so 500, right? Okay, so right now, if I were to uh, do anything, like let's say just retype one of these, you see that all of those random numbers um, change their values. So if I, for example, was going to sort the data um, from using my random numbers from low to high and use that as a way to pick my, um, random sample, my random numbers are going to change every time I do some sort of calculation on my sheet. So what we can do here is um, we're going to select the whole uh, column of random numbers, not including the title. At okay, we'll select the whole column. top okay so just the value or just the equations themselves that give us these values and i'm going to copy it so whichever way you like to copy copy control c uh, home copy control c whatever and then into the exact same location i'm going to right click I'm going to go down to paste options and I'm going to choose the sec. I'm going to write. She just right clicked in a random cell. And then into the exact same location, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to paste options and I'm going to choose the second one in paste values. And now those random numbers. Uh -huh, I see what she's doing. The reason you do that is so that all these numbers are just paste it in as their numbers instead of as a formula so that they stay the same. That was one. So I guess I see why she did in between zero and one. It's just kind of a weird way to do it. Or maybe it's just the easiest way to do it, but that's not what the textbook did, I don't think. But anyways, there, good to go. Now all of them are random numbers and they're not gonna change. Numbers generally generated are now numbers rather than the formula equal R A N D, right? So now we can see that each cell contains a value rather than a formula. So um, now I can choose from the whole menu to um, sort and filter. Sort and filter. Custom sort. Custom sort. And you're going to sort by. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're going to sort by um, random number 25. Random 25. Uh, we could go smallest to largest, or largest to smallest. Doesn't matter because it's random. Now remember, your numbers are going to be different than mine. 
you can ignore column A. For some reason, instead of just typing in the numbers 1 through 500, they used a formula for it. So anyway, just ignore that. What we're really... Oh, my God. <laughs> Great job, look. Really, buddy? They used the formula for that? Oh, my gosh, so annoying. Okay, so we're... There we go. It's all done. And now we have generated a random sample, and we probably just want the first 25 values. Oh, it's so annoying. Why can't... Well, let's see how she deals with that. Now that I've sorted this, I'm going to take my first 25 um, values here in the proportion column. And I may actually, since I included the word proportion, I'm going to choose 26 of them. Okay, so how do I know that's 26? If I look down here in my, um, oh, I'm forgetting what this is, this bar down here is called. Uh, but anyway, it tells you that the average and the count and the sum. So I can see that I've got 26 cells selected. I'm going to copy that data. Seven. And put it over. Copy and paste. Here. All right. Wait, did she cut it or copy? I've got 26 cells selected. I'm going to copy that data and put it over here. All right. And this is going to be copy my and paste. sample. So, yeah. Um. Count. Doesn't matter, just go this. And good. That was great. Sample of twenty five. All right, so here's my sample of 25. Um, so they wanted us to um, find the mean and the standard deviation for that. I think I will just go down here. But actually, it was the standard error of the estimate mean. Um, I should specify that this is the sample mean. How about we do this? We're going to be means, and this is the sample of 25. And we're going to have to calculate the population mean. Okay. So equal average. It is mean of the sample and mean of the population. So we're going to get the mean. Is that what the textbook said to do? It says generate. Okay, so it says generate the sample mean and then the population mean and figure out the error. I guess that's why you're doing that. Okay, so. I guess I'll do that myself. Just it just says
equals average. You really have to type the word average? That's so annoying. Okay. And equals average of this There we go. And then we probably want to have the sampling error. So sampling error. How did this end up like this? We're going to get different answers, so don't worry. For the sample, at least, we're going to get a different answer. I need to make some way of making it visible that that's different. I could, I could make it bold, I suppose, here. Let's do that. Okay, so um, the population mean, on the other hand, is going to be equal average. But again, instead of um, these 25 here, it's going to be all of the values in column B. So start with B2 and go to uh, B501. So we're getting all 500 of the original data points in there. All right. So my population mean is 0.5. Zero. Um, I might increase the decimals one. Okay, so um, the difference <laughs> between those two is called the sampling error. And the reason it's called uh, sampling error is because it is the result of taking a sample of the population and it's the difference as a result between the population's actual mean, which you often don't know. So more than likely, really, you don't know it. Um, so being able to find the sampling error is very um, unusual. So probably unless you're given a problem like this in a textbook, um, you won't know the population mean and you won't be able to find the sampling error. But again, the sampling error is simply the difference between uh, the population and the sample. And it's the, an error because of the fact that you took a subset of the total number of values. All right, hopefully I'm not beating a dead horse, but I'm always surprised how many people get this confused because we've got sampling error. And then we start talking uh, in, in the next part of this problem about uh, standard error of the estimate. And standard error of the estimates uh, significantly different and people get them mixed up. And I, I guess that's probably why I'm still talking about it. I want you to remember the difference. All right, so the sampling error here is going to be equal to uh, the population minus the sample or sample minus population doesn't really matter, but the, and it, we always um, refer to it as a positive value. So, um, 
well, it doesn't matter because it's just a magnitude. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, I guess is what I, should, I was trying to say. So some of you will have uh, numbers a little greater, a little less than mine. Some of you may have negative numbers where your um, sample mean was actually higher than the population mean. Okay. Um, so that's pretty small sampling there, there 0 0.012. Now, the next part of the problem was asking us to uh, collect a sample of 20, of uh, 50. And I could just use those same um, random numbers. However, the author of the book, the creator of this problem, uh, intended it to be set up as a second set of random numbers. So R-A-N-D, open, close parenthesis, um, and again, copy uh, or double click on the right hand corner. Okay, I think I know what to do there. That was funny. Well, of course, she's not doing it in order. She's doing part D, and then she's going to do part C. But I'll do I'll do it the way she's doing it because I feel I feel like I want to follow along. <laughs> so. Said to do fifty. It said to do fifty. Okay, e equals rand. Fifty.
look at that plus sign. sign. And it copies random numbers down for all 500 cells. And we can then copy those and paste them in. Remember, second option over values so that that function random is replaced by actual values. All right. Okay, and now um, that we have them pasted as actual values, get out of here, sort and filter, and 50, and smallest to largest, that's fine. Uh, ooh, we do not want to sort all of this. Um, we just want, we don't even care about column A. So I can isolate. I, I probably should have had a column in between D and E, and then it wouldn't have automatically selected um, columns E and F when I did the sort. Oops, got a custom sort, small. Again, portion of fifth of the title. So control C, and this is the sample of your sample. Again, remember, and sample minus zero points. Uh, 0 0.036. Now, in theory, because the sample is larger, um, the sample should be actually a better estimate of the actual population. But again, because it's a subset of the total of 500 available values to select from, this uh, sample mean of 50 happens to be um, quite a bit lower than our population mean. Okay, and so, um, so 25, is this estimate bound to be uh, more accurate than the one for 25? Well, as we can see here, it's not more accurate. 0 0.036 is larger than 0 0.012. Um, so sometimes it will be more accurate, sometimes it will not. However, the one thing that we haven't ca calculated yet is the standard error of the estimate. And um, what we call that is, uh, S E X bar, and I can't make a little bar in um, Excel like you can when you're writing by hand, so I just call it X dash bar. Really loading. Okay. S E X bar. <laughs> Wait. This is taking forever. Okay. So, so the standard error is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So whenever you have an increase, that number on the bottom gets bigger and it makes your standard error of the estimate smaller. And after we calculate it, I'll explain more about what it means, all right? So the standard error of the estimate is equal to the sample standard deviation. And remember that's stdev.s for sample, all right? Okay, so we have standard deviation s And, and for this, this one, it's something like 25. 25. Okay. And, and then select, divided by the square root. And select those parentheses and then divide by. So 
So it's the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Oh. Squirt parenthesis. <laughs> oh, it's just the number of uh, number of things there. Square root of uh, a standard deviation of this divided by the square root of this equals number. Okay. So we have standard deviation that's about by square root of 25. We should at least get a similar number. And it will actually end up being... Point zero six three three seven two. So I got point zero six. She got so for that uh, particular sample of twenty five, my. SEX bar is uh, 0 0.0679. I probably should have set this up a little different so I didn't have to rewrite all of this, but I'll just copy down. So then for my sample of 50, my standard error X bar, and I guess maybe I should clarify that this is for the 20, oops. This is for the 25 sample. And this is for the sample of 50. So I got 0 0.0395. You might get ends up with different answers. Yeah, yeah so, so uh, again, yeah. Yeah. so G2, G2. So automatically, because we're dividing by the square root of 50, we should see a much smaller value and lo and behold, we do. So um, part D then asks, is its standard error bound to be smaller than the part than the one in part C? Absolutely, yes, because when you divide by the square root of a bigger number, you're going to get a smaller value in your sampling error, okay? Or your standard error, excuse me. Now you see why people get it mixed up. Um, so what is yes. the standard error of the estimate? Well, if you think that... What if I don't care? Hello! Okay. So...
back to um, the sample here. Uh, we said that we said to what they say, um, your sample of 25, and I take everybody's sample of 25 in the entire class and brought all of those means and standard deviations together and plotted out those means um, on a, we would end up with a normal curve um, up here. I should have actually said our sample of 50 because sufficiently large is 30. N equals 30 or greater and a distribution of sample means will always have a normal shape when we get into N10. So it might seem a little abstract, might seem a little obtuse, but at this point in time, just knowing how to calculate it it is what we need to get in uh, through, and then we're going to see the bigger pictures as we go through here. Um, so, central limit theorem, like I said, very, very powerful. Um, when I say that, um, if you have enough same grade distribution, is normal what would have distributions of sample means that are normal. Uniform distribution would be where it would see. Okay. Um, so, like the probability of rolling, if you roll a specifically like connects. Okay, so uh, I think we um, calculated. Oh, oh, and one other thing I like to point out is uh, part C has to calculate a good approximation for the standard error of the mean. So when we did our standard error of the mean here, you notice that I took the standard deviation of the sample. If they had said to calculate it, um, the actual standard error of the mean. I would have used the population standard deviation. But in, re in the real world, you very infrequently have the population standard deviation. So we use a good approximation to it by substituting the sample standard deviation. Okay. All right. So for this problem, we actually could have found the actual SEX bar instead of substitute it by using the the population standard deviation, but the problem specifically told us to calculate a good approximation. So that should be ringing off bells saying, okay, they want us to use the standard deviation from the sample. Okay. All right, number nine is the next one. Yay, one of the four questions took me 45 minutes. That's great. 45 minutes. For me specifically, for my teacher, it took 20 minutes, 24 minutes. Oh, man. I, 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 oh, my. Good day. So, done with that one. So now, go on to number nine. We're going to download this file, rename it to nine. We'll rename the file. <laughs> to seven nine. We'll rename it to seven nine. That's right. Seven. There. So we have four variables, number of arrivals, f 
for a specific five minute period of the day. Consider this data set a simple random sample. I mean, that's pretty simple. Okay, this time, um, this time I'm going to do the answers on a separate tab because there's not very much room on this page. So, It says, find the sample mean. And I'm going to just be doing average of all those things. Double check. But I like to be able to see my top row. So the first thing I'm going to do to so average of the column, so that's pretty simple. She does it at the bottom of the column, but I, I'm doing a separate tab, so. Um, equals average. Of this to this this equals average <sighs> you know what this is getting a little tedious maybe it is a good idea to do it the way she did it because then you could just copy the formula <laughs> Why well, don't I want to have all my answers on a separate tab? Maybe it'll still work. Watch this. It literally worked. It worked anyways. There you go. So I got like 29.7, I don't think we need uh, this many digits. So I'm going to get rid of some of these and make it a little easier to just talk about the numbers when we get to that point. Um, so we see that uh, 29.77 is the- So it looks like she's gonna be doing the standard error 
x bar equals so standard error so to calculate that it's a sample right let's see they asked a question about that um, like I don't think she's Interval, uh, or the average number of arrivals between 8 and 805 uh, makes sense right people heading to work a uh, little bit less at 9 o'clock uh, but still pretty high um, by 10 it's dropped down to 15 and 15.24 um, and by 11 it's down to 14.7 okay now to again the standard deviation uh, of the sample stdv.s Two hundred and fifty six. It's the square root of two fifty six, right? Because that's the number. That was all the so sound to be. Okay, so we have 0 0.34, 0 0.29, 0 0.12, 0 0.34, 0 0.29, 0 0.22, 0 0.22, so there. Good. That was funny. Whoops. Oh, great. That's the end. Anyways, we have done that. And unfortunately, um, yes. um, so we see that the standard error um, for that first interval is uh, 0 0.345, 0 0.291. So we'll find the sample mean, find the standard error. And then asked a bunch of questions. Did she even answer the question for A? I mean, did she answer A? Oh, man. So go back and see if she did. Uh, she did. Uh, and again it stays um, the function stays the same the formula stays the same but the cells change from one column to the next column to the next okay I don't think we need uh, this many digits so I'm going to get rid of some of these and make it a little easier to just talk about the numbers 
when we get to that point. Um, so we see that uh, 29.77 is the interval uh, or the average number of arrivals between 8 and 805 uh, makes sense, right? People heading to work a uh, little bit less at nine o'clock, uh, but still pretty high. Um, by 10, it's dropped down to 15 and 15.24. Um, and by 11, it's down to 14.7. Okay. Now, to, again, the standard deviation uh, of the sample, stdev.s of my values. Again, don't select the mean itself but the values above it, and I guess I'm doing this the long way this time, but that's okay. All right, so cells B2 to B257, okay, oops. And then before you uh, leave that cell, we need to divide by the square root of the 257 that are the number of... Since there's many significant digits. Um, so we see that the standard error um, for that first interval is uh, 0 0.345, 0 0.291 for the second interval, uh, 0.197 for the third, and 0.229 um, for the fourth. So uh, variability is staying in that range around 0.2 to 0.3, 0.35 at the high end. Okay. All right, so the questions that they asked us. Um, okay, part A asked, if each of these is used as an estimate from the corresponding unknown population mean, is there any reason to believe that, uh, that it either underestimates or overestimates, why not? No, there's absolutely no reason to believe that these 256 observations are biased, so they should be representative of the actual population. Right? If for some reason we thought we had a biased sample, that might be a concern, but at this point, I don't, um, we have no way of believing that this is biased sample or no. Oops, that's not. All right. Okay, um, so part A, there's no reason to believe that they're biased and so they should be representative of course What are the, how can you interpret these error? How do you interpret these? Um, I have no idea. For me, uh, the question was, what's, what's the approximate the standard errors of the estimates? How can you interpret these standard errors? Be specific as possible. Okay, so these are the standard errors um, down here, 0.34, as I said, said before, all right. Um, this assumes that the 256 observations represent a random sample from the population of all possible days and that the population standard deviations are not known. So, so again, we have no reason to believe that either of those assumptions are not valid, okay? So for example, the first value 0.345 is indicating how much uh, the, the estimate of 29.77 is wrong as an estimate of the population mean number of arrivals for the first five minute interval, okay? 
So more specifically, there's about a 68% chance that this estimate is off by no more than 0.34. Chance that this estimate is off by no more than 0.34. Where did 68% come from? Empirical rules, right? Plus or minus one standard. Did 60 chance that this estimate is off by no more than 0.34. 68% chance that. Okay, so basically. Um, there is a 68% chance that the estimates of that the of the pop of the population means are off by no more than the standard error. Do I have to include the 98, 95% too? This estimate is off by no more than 0.34. Where did 68% come from? Empirical rules, right? Plus or minus one standard deviation, we don't change the standard error. And 68% of the data should fall within that interval. So we can say, hey, we believe that this estimate is, um, there's 68% chance that the estimate is between um, 29.77 minus 0.345 and 29.77 plus 0.345. So we would end up with a low uh, low limit and a higher limit, upper limit, and we would be 68% confident that that value fell in that mean falls in somewhere in that value range. Um, yes, this is leading us to chapter eight, where we look at confidence intervals. Usually, we don't look at a 68% confidence interval. Usually, we look at a 95% confidence interval, right? So, I'm 95% confident that the mean is an interval. Right? But then it's two standard errors. 
So the mean plus or minus two times the standard error is going to give us a 95% confidence interval. Um, trust me, you will become much more closely acquainted with the concept of confidence intervals um, when we move into chapter eight. <laughs> All right. Um, then uh, part C. Okay, so we got that. And. Is it likely that the estimates in part A are accurate to within 0.4? Answer for each variable separately? Are you serious? Why does it have to answer for all of them separately? That's annoying. Yes. Is it likely like that the estimate, estimate in part, part A are accurate within 0.4 of arrival? Okay. So why or why not? Um, so these standard errors give a rough, rough estimate of how uh, much the sample means vary, right? Or, or have a potential to be an error, okay? As an estimate of the unknown population mean, of course, when I say in error, okay? So in this case, they're all less than 0.4. The biggest one is 0.345. So there's a good chance that the estimates will be off by less than 0.4, um, especially with the um, third one here, 0.197, okay? And even with 0.229, that's, you know, this is less than half of 0.4, and this is just barely more than half of 0.4. So yeah, definitely would say that, these means will be accurate with in 0.4 of the actual population value. All right. Okay, so we'll kind of flog that one to death. That's all we had to do for that question. We're done with two out of four.